Here is our 512 cubic inch big block Mopar that we built for Project Rum Runner. Today, we got to get this engine off of this engine stand onto the run stand yep. and hopefully make some noise. That's the goal. So hopefully, fingers crossed, by the yep. end of this video, we can fire it up. But I think unless some of those parts down there don't fit this engine, then yeah. we should have it running because we got everything we need. I know. Uh, we got the mini starter. We got the clutch, the very expensive clutch, very expensive, expensive uh the bell housing, bell housing. And, and we got the plug wires that we still have to custom cut we got to prime the oiling system we got to set the timing we got to plumb some fuel lines um, olivia's got to set the base settings on this carburetor that she rebuilt and we well, got to put a battery in there we got to yeah. put the cooling system it's a lot it's a lot but a lot our, of little things. our biggest thing is going to be getting this engine actually into the stand because uh as we learned you can't use a cherry picker yeah you can't use a cherry picker to put it like on there so we're gonna have to get creative maybe we'll use one of these beams or something to like a beam <laughs> lift it up and hold it while we put the engine stand underneath it or Oh. The lift. The lift? Maybe we'll, bring the We'll take the charger down. off of the lift and we'll put a chain or a strap over one of these. Yeah. And then we'll just lift it up. Lift it up, put it in. God damn. Dang. Okay, okay. But as you guys know, when it comes to building engines, uh, nothing ever seems to want to work. So we have all the pieces we need. It's just a matter of like, is everything going to fit? So mm -hmm. like I said, we're going to do our best to get fired up. That's the goal. But uh, for now, what are we going to start with? I think we should start with taking the carburetor off, yeah. putting this plate onto the intake manifold. Okay and then moving the charger outside mm -hmm. off the lift so we can use the lift to pick up the engine. And I think we should just get it onto the engine run stand first. And then um, after that, we'll worry about like plumbing the, the fuel system and the, I'll make the spark plug wires. Yeah, I guess we should just get it on there first to like see like, you know, what we even have room for and. Yeah, I, I think by now I'm just kind of, I, I'd feel way more motivated to get those wires, spark plug wires done and all the other stuff done if I see it on that engine run stand. I'll get the half inch. Okay. I always worry that this isn't going to be enough to hold these engines up, but it's crazy how strong it actually is because I've lifted plenty of um, engines, even with the transmission at the same time. We did yours oh, that way. Oh yeah, that's the way we did it. Are these all tightened down? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> hope so. <laughs> what do you mean? I thought you did it. No, I thought you did it. <laughs> <laughs> We got to start like uh, like marking them with marker. Oh, with our sure, name yeah, or initial. Initial it. So if it comes loose later, we know who's responsible. Mm-hmm. You know. All right. Let's see if we can pull the threads out of this intake. Oh my gosh. Then, then just the right amount. Like so, right there. Okay, it's ready. All right, let's. This, see, it doesn't have a hole in the middle though. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be going one way or the other. So if we lift up from here, the front of the engine is going to go down. Yep. But we have a big heavy clutch and a. Oh, true. A Dekine yep. for the back. So let's put it here. So at first it's going to lean this way, but once we put the flex plate on, the, or I'm sorry, the bell housing and the um, flywheel, yeah, it's going to go back to even. I don't okay. Know, calculating. Okay. Okay. But first we got to get this bad boy. Yeah. Let's push a uh, rum runner outside. All right. All right. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, the part 
room that has a bunch of chains on it. And what we could do is... Can you pull that bottom one out this way? Yep. And so what we'll do is we'll lift it up in the center so that way it's not hanging that way or this way, persuading the lift to like want to fall that way. Get the weight in the center. Just keep it straight. Yeah. Um, that should be far enough out to where we can get the engine run stand underneath here. Okay. So let's put the chain around here. We'll go up with the lift. Okay, tell me how far you want it. <laughs> We'll move this carpet out so that way it doesn't get in our way of the engine. Out of the way. Uh. Oh, keep going. Oh, keep going? Yeah. That's good. So we'll put that, center it up right there. We'll get our chain. Uh, which chain should we use? Are they both linked together? Yeah, no? No. Okay, so we'll use the one with the hooks. With the hooks, okay. Yeah. Actually, I take that back. This one? Yes. Okay, right here. We're gonna favor the back side. Right? Yeah. yeah, favor the back side. So we'll need a bolt to stick through both of those. Mm -hmm. So we'll put that through there. That little bolt? That little bolt, that's all it takes. Are you sure? <laughs> I used to think the same thing. But For real? Yeah. An and engine? A big yeah. block? I used to think the same thing, but it's, these bolts are a lot stronger than you think. Should we like wrap it a couple times? Or? Here you go. So. But let's lift up a little bit. Are you yeah. ready? Are you ready? Uh -huh. I don't know. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's like off. We have lift off. I don't know. I'm really scared because this is just, oh! Oh, just a was just lot the lift of money hanging right there. That is a lot of money dangling in there. Okay. So just take these off? Yeah, go ahead. Are you sh go ahead. I'm so scared right now. You're right. Should I just leave these or should we put them elsewhere? There you go. Oh. Oh, there's a nut on that one. I'll get it. Oh, and on this one. Both 916s? I think so. It looks like it. All right, that's good. Okay, and then just the other side. Yank the thing. <gasps> okay. And just there's one more nut on that side. Where? I think like right there. Okay. Ready? Ahead. Yep. Oh. Hang oh. Okay. Okay. It's hanging. <laughs> Here you go. Okay. Now we have to <laughs> install the clutch and the bell housing here before we put it on the stand. And whoop. what was that? The valve cover. <laughs> <laughs> and that's gonna just help balance it out a little bit because we have it favored toward the back here. So it's tipping forward. So here is our center force dyad clutch that we're gonna use for this combination. This thing is really powerful. It can handle like 1500 horsepower. But um, we're only gonna use the actual flywheel part of this for right now because that's all that the starter needs to engage. So we gotta take this apart, pull it off, get the flywheel out, bolt it onto there. 
And then later on, once we get the T56, we're going to um, install the pilot bushing and then put the rest of the clutch on there, so. Okay, bell housing and flywheel are on, and you can see now how it pretty much evened out the weight on this thing. So it's gonna be a lot easier now to put it into the run stand. It's looking pretty damn good. Not as sketchy as I thought. So I think all we have to do now is um, put some bolts through and roll the stand over. Okay, I'm going up with it. Go ahead. <laughs> Probably high enough. Let me go down a little bit on the lock. Slow. Keep going. Hold it right there. Okay. It's not on the lock right now, but let's see. Getting closer. It looks so cool, like already. Damn. Okay. We got all the bolts in. It looks like this engine stand is actually going to work. So, but one issue we may have is with the headers. We'll know in a little bit, um, but everything seems to be working all right for now. Yep. So we got it hooked up to the back here. We're just tightening everything down and we just adjusted. It's so nice to be able to just slide these around. And we got some hardware in over there. Where's the 916th? Uh, which, the wrench? Yeah. Right here. And a socket if you could find one, please. Short or deep? Short. A short mouth, Here. So maybe we should get the headers on actually first before we torque all this down. Okay, let's try. Oh boy, it might have to go on the inside. Okay, hang on. Oof, it's gonna be close. Like a glove. You think so? Oh yeah, I think this side's gonna work. Okay, let me get the bolt. Test fitting the other header. This one might be a little tighter, we'll see. Ooh, does it work? We're about to find out, boss. Hope it does. Come on, baby. Two piece headers. And it's on. Well, I think it might fit. Here we go. It's looking better. And we got room. Oh yes, perfect. Oh my gosh, it's like it was built for a big block Mopar. Yeah, it's gonna be wild with these headers like shooting straight at us when we start it, but. I know, I was just saying to Danny, it's like you wanna check like your temp and then it's like you just get blasted <laughs> over here. Obviously the intent is you would have like mufflers and whatever, but maybe we can uh, get no something. No need for a decibel gauge. So we just got to finish tightening up um, some of the like stands there and then we can uh, lower it down and take off the chain and then this thing can roll around. Yes. Yay. Oh, I can't wait to turn this key. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, okay, let's finish it up. Let's do it. Yep, lower the globe. Okay, I'm gonna do this so slow. Watch it. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Wow, it didn't even move. Shake test. <laughs> I think it's good.
Okay, we finally got our engine all wired up on the test stand and we're ready to make some noise, I believe. I think we got everything hooked up right. We went over and checked everything a couple times. We got none of the wires in the way of the headers or and we got water flowing through it. So mm -hmm. I guess the only thing left to do is to hit the key and see what happens. I guess right now my main concern is the starter engagement on the teeth of the flywheel. Mm -hmm. What about you? Finding leaks, I guess you could say. Oh. That's yeah. my only concern, but. That's another concern too, but I think we did it right, so. I think so. We got fuel in the bowls mm -hmm. and we put fuel in the little peanut tank here. So I guess the only thing left to do is to turn the key and just see what happens. <laughs> All right. Well, of course it's raining the day we want to do this. Hasn't been raining all week. Now we're ready to fire it up. And so we are shooting the exhaust inside, but it's fine. We got fans going. We're going to open up all these doors. We're good. We're good. Okay. Let's see. We got fuel. Make sure this is priming. Yep. Like, how are you doing? I'm not doing well. I'm doing fine. You're doing fine? Yeah. You're going to hit the key, right? I'm not hitting no key. <laughs> this thing's going to be so loud. We don't have any exhaust on it right now because we don't know what exhaust we're going to use for the car eventually. So we didn't want to just buy something just because. So hopefully we don't get a big backfire out of here. But I'm going to keep my earplugs out for the first initial start because I want to hear like if there's anything like going on that I don't like. Okay. I want to be able to hear it. So And then after that, I'll put my earplugs in. Okay. Watch your feet. Okay, I think we just need to give it some more fuel. Just needs. All right, um, you ready? Yeah. Starter doesn't sound too bad, that's good. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, fuel whoa, leak, fuel leak. Big fuel leak, big fuel leak. Oh, okay. Um, we Shit. got a big, big fuel leak. Oh shoot, grab some towels. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so bad. Damn. It's this old fuel line. Oh. Dang it. So we got this um, AN set up here from uh, the junkyard, I guess you could say. And uh, <laughs> you know obviously it was there so for a reason. Funny? Is, um, I think that's the one part on this whole engine where you were like, oh, um, we're, our pockets are blown out. We got to save money somehow. And it was that part, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Danny's changing out the 90s steel braided line with the blue and red AN fittings for this equally as old. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. Mm -hmm. No, I think this should be okay. If not, we're going to go get some Mr. Gasket shitty hard line and it's still going to leak anyway. So we'd well, <laughs> be in the same camp. We could always make a copper line. Yeah. Well, we will eventually. Some, yeah. When it goes in the car. But for now, this will have to do. I think this has a better chance than that other piece of junk. I never liked these and fitting or these uh, steel braided yeah. ones. They always like poke you. They don't look cool. Like they're just. I hate them. Danny hates them. All right, let's give this another shot. Ready? Yeah. Almost got me. Careful. The timing didn't move, did it? No. Hmm. How's our oil pressure? Can you watch that? I got oh. a fuel leak over here. Another one. 
know the fuel leak guys oh out the back too get those towels out oh boy might have been leaking from these guys from which guys sorry from these let's see i mean they're tight but okay i'm gonna watch the back and we had oil pressure yeah we did have oil pressure so let's give it another shot we'll see if we fix the leaks on the carburetor ready Seems like it's getting a lot of fuel or two. Let's see. Ready? Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do is open up the Oh, I already feel another leak over here. Dang it. There's a leak coming from the top here. Oh my gosh, it's from like the top now. Yeah. This adjustment screw, I believe it's a 916th and a flathead. That's to set the bowls, right? Yeah. Okay, the issue is we have fuel coming out of this guy right here. And then there's a there's a float in there. And then a needle and seat. Once the float rises, it should seat the needle and stop the fuel from coming in. But either that float is not floating, or the seat Seats. ain't seating, or both. Both. Either way, let's take this little plug out right here. Let's get this taken apart and we'll see what's actually holding us up. Okay. So how do you normally set the float? You're supposed to do it like about just above half or like to where you could see it through the sight plug or glass. But this is like not, this is odd. Okay, so we might have misdiagnosed it. I just pulled out the plug here and the bowl is not all the way full and a bunch of fuel didn't come out of there so that tells me that this leak right here probably happened from the fuel coming in and as it was trying to fill up and pressurize that gasket there was probably leaking right probably i mean that's not full so. was it tight when you pulled it off like the did it didn't seem loose did it no okay but we'll try it we'll do it right now so okay all right okay. let's give this another shot guys Go. Okay, so you can watch for the oil pressure and uh, fuel leaks okay. on that side. Yeah, I'm gonna walk around it. Ready? Yep. Okay, we're gonna set the idle up a little higher now. Oh, the flat head is right there. I want some more air. Right, uh, this one. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. is there fuel? More fuel? Oh, it's coming out of this fitting, I think. God dang it. This thing is just leaking everywhere. I know, maybe we Over should- Over here too, look. You know, this is why we do fuel injection. Piece of junk carburetors. No, there's just a few factors going on here. Dude, the thing is cracked. Oh, it's cracked now. The thing is cracked right there. Oh, shh. Okay, you know, this- these carburetors. This, this one in I particular- just about had it. No, this one's cursed because Danny doesn't believe me, but this bowl was cracked. And then he was like, oh, you dropped it or you over tightened it. And I was like, no, when I was putting it on, I saw it was cracked and now this one is. So either you over tighten this one or it was already cracked, but regardless, I want to get that other carburetor on this. What a pile. I know. Okay, we are not going to be running that carburetor. Uh, bowl is cracked, which is funny because that bowl was cracked as well and was replaced. So no to the annular boosters. And we're coming over here to this unit that I have. I rebuilt this a long time ago. I'm just gonna double check all the settings on it that everything is good. Quickly tighten it up and then we're just swapping it on. So 
this should do the trick. What is this? I think it's like a 670 unit. 670 CFM. Yeah. You guys ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> to the streets. Carburetors for the streets. Let's get this other one on. Oh, I need the vacuum port on the metering block. The little vacuum oh, plug. Okay, yeah. have the idle open just a little bit. Okay. All right, we got carburetor number two on. So let's try our luck again. Okay, I'm gonna watch for leaks and oil pressure. Ready? Yep. Oh my gosh, the whole car is rattling. Is it? Yeah. wants a lot of fuel. Okay. So you have to keep like dumping that thing. Okay. No more leaks, right? No more. No more leaks. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to set the timing. So you're going to probably have to hold it like at 3000 RPM. I'll tell you when. And then, uh, oh, we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. You gotta dump Even it. More? Just okay. keeps pumping that thing. Ready? Keep going. Get. <laughs> Even more. Okay, ready? Oh, see almost. if you don't. Uh, almost. Okay, keep. I know the spot now. I can see. Okay, keep giving it gas. Okay, ready? It's like so touchy there. It was like not even on it. Yeah. It wants a lot more fuel. Jeez, it's so much burning it's off the headers. these headers, I know. <laughs> Holy heck. <laughs> that sounds good. <coughs> okay. Oh my God. Is the key off? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's on right now. I'm just checking oh, the temperature okay, of the okay. engine. So, um, I don't know, but it, it, every, every time I squirt fuel in there, it just wants to stay alive. Well, it runs. I mean, I don't hear anything out of the ordinary and it has like 85 pounds of oil pressure. Oh. It's crazy. Damn. So, it's, it's tough for me to, to check the timing because I'm on that side. Okay, okay, so then- Did you see how I it was saw working how you did it. I saw how you did it. I'm gonna give it a go. Just, burp, you just burp, yeah, burp. you just can't just be scared blips. of it. Just blips. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be tough for me to check the timing like that, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, okay ready? Wait. Okay. Like small ones though, not like big blips. No, yeah, just like, like little, just a bunch little, of small little ones. ones. Yeah. 
Okay. Practice. More. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we'll let those burn off for a second. But I have the feeling it's running really lean. Um, all right, so we have success. The engine sounds really healthy. Yeah. Like all of the cylinders are firing because they're all smoking. And um, I, we don't hear any noise coming from the engine. Mm -mm. It sounds pretty good. So I, we got good oil pressure. Yeah. So it's all the good signs. Yeah. I just think that we need to get a car... A, bigger carburetor that's more suited for this. This is just something we had here. Um, we're gonna look into maybe like a 950 CFM carburetor mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, this is not its like final carb. Just needed something to get it running for you guys, but I'm so glad. I was really like unsure if we were gonna have it running in this video because you guys know how it goes with engines, but like, it's like actually running. Yeah. That's so huge. <coughs> So I think we're going to get another carburetor for this engine and we'll get it running and, and then you guys can hear it idling and maybe we'll even get a small exhaust system for it just to quiet it yeah, down a little bit so we can hear the engine a little bit better. Me. But we're going to keep working out <clears throat> the little kinks. and um, It's cool. Now it's, we got the run stand figured out. Now we can run this thing anytime and like keep dialing it in. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, this thing just needs a bigger carburetor. Like, those little squirts just ain't nothing for this big engine. I'm happy with that. You're gonna be playing with this thing, aren't you? <laughs> Just to wake up in the mornings, you know, get yourself going. Cool. Well, there you guys have it. There is our 512 stroker making noise. This is a huge step in the build, like major. Um, don't see any leaks, you know? We were just chasing the fuel leaks, but other than that, don't see any other issues. So that is a huge win. The next time you guys see our big block Mopar, it's gonna be running a lot better. Like I'm talking idling on its own. We're gonna set the timing and uh, we have a proper carburetor for it on the way. So we're really looking forward to getting that. And uh, as always, we really appreciate you guys watching the channel. You know, the content is free, but really it's, uh, your merch orders that really help support us and allow us to do fun stuff like we just did today. And I wanna give a huge shout out to one of our subscribers, Lisa Daniels, for making the biggest gnarly speed shop merch order in history <laughs> so far. She ordered like, 
three of everything. She got the zip up hoodies, the t-shirts. She got one of our hats, surfboard keychains, the work. So Lisa, thank you so much. That was super generous and we hope you dig it. But yeah, guys, um, we will see you next week with uh, more fun shenanigans.